Okay. So uh, thank you for inviting me, Manos, for sure. It's a pleasure being back. It was a pleasure having you in Belgium last year. So it's great to be back here. Uh, before I start off, there's two very important people I should thank as well, because for them it was a tough day, and that's the two ladies up there. Thank you so much. You've done a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Otherwise, we wouldn't understand a thing here, so thanks for that. So uh, we, we've heard some talks uh, this afternoon uh, with a lot of causes of shoulder pain in athletes, but there is one topic that was addressed to me that still not attended yet, and that might be a cause of pain in a uh, sportive shoulder as well, and that's a suprascapular nerve. And my interest in the nerve started in 2004, and at that stage I was fellow in Annecy with Bruno, who's in the back here, and who talk to us tomorrow. And there, they were already working around a lot of nerves in the shoulder. And, and it's just when you see people working around nerves that you realize it's, it might be a problem as well. And that's probably the conclusion of my talk already, that if you think about the pathology, you will see the pathology, because it's really existing. If you don't think about it, you will never see it. But if you think about it in your setup, in your diagnosis, then you'll see that, uh, that it does exist. So before we go into the practical part of my talk, as on Saturday we have a Gdaver workshop, I'll try to focus on the technical part of working around the nerves, because I think Saturday is a perfect occasion if you never looked up a nerve to go and see and find nerves in a shoulder. So I'll try to be very practical. But before we go into the practical part, we need to address some theoretical stuff uh, around the nerves. And we should realize that the suprascapular nerve is not only a motoric nerve, it's sensory as well. So it might be a cause of just pain, not only just weakness, but also pain. Uh, should mind, uh, if we go and look clinically to a patient, of course, it's an exclusion criteria because you've got so many things to think about, as we've seen in the previous talks. But clinically, of course, there's a lot of, if, if it's very clear, then the laws of power will probably get our attention. Uh, pain as well, and the atrophy, if it's long existing, uh, will point out that there's some problem around the muscles, probably caused uh, by an entrapment of the nerve. There are some uh, testings described. I don't think it's very useful, but uh, if you're happy with it, you can do some clinical testings with it as well. Technically, if you think about nerves around the shoulder, everybody's talking about EMG. The importance of EMG is becoming less. Initially, we thought that we should have, have a positive EMG before starting to work at nurse. We're not sure about that yet because it's not that specific. But if you ask for an EMG and you believe in it, it's very interesting to ask to compare both shoulders because the people doing those examinations, they're not very used to examine uh, that nerve. But if they allow it to, to, to check both shoulders, then they might find some difference between the two sides. Of course, we've got normal x-rays. We, as in France, we work with arthro-CT, but if we're thinking about nerve problems having an impact on muscles, MRI, of course, will add extra in our diagnosis. Most difficult part, if you see an atrophy like that with muscle weakness, is probably Parsons-Turner syndrome. The biggest difference, if you ask your patients how it started, is that within a Parsons-Turner syndrome, it starts with a lot of pain during two, three, four days, and then the pain gets away, and they keep on having the weakness. If you compare that with an entrapment, that's a complete other story, where it sudden, where it very slowly begins with some pain, and it, the pain continues, as uh, does the weakness. And of course, injections around the nerves are very helpful. Talking about suprascapular nerve, we do have to realize that it comes from the cervical spine, C5, C6, so it can be a spine problem as well. There can be some herniation. It runs underneath some muscles. And of course, for us, it's the ligaments uh, around the shoulder that can be important. If you look on the internet and go and find some pictures of the nerve, there's a lot of bad pictures. And I choose this one because this is a good one. Um, and this is, this is the one that points out, oh, okay, the, the two locations where we should, we should think of. Uh, of course, the suprascapular notch, but also the spinoglenoidal uh, notch with the transfer, with two transverse ligaments over there. Normally, this is how it looks like uh, at the suprascapular notch. That means that the artery runs on top of the ligament and the nerve runs underneath. Um, at the spinoglenoidal notch, both structures runs underneath a small ligament 
and I'll show you some pictures later of how it looks like. Why is this uh, slide nice as well? It demonstrates two possibilities if we're talking about nerves. They can be compressed by cysts, which makes it quite easy. It can be an entrapment underneath the ligaments, which makes the diagnosis a bit more difficult. Um, so let's start with the, with the easy part, which are the cysts. And cysts can occur uh, when we've got some labral pathology. We've seen some uh, pictures, we've seen some videos with labral pathologies with slap lesions. Uh, those are quite frequent in our overhead athletes. Um, those lesions, for me, they're, they're actually quite normal for them. It's almost not pathologic. If you play volleyball for 10 or 15 years, you will have those lesions at the superior labrum. Uh, you can have the lesions superiorly, you can have them posterior superiorly, you can even have them inferiorly, but there the nerve is not, uh, it, it's another nerve that will be the problem, that will be the axillary nerve and not the suprascapular nerve. Um, those cysts can easily be seen on MRI studies, you can see it on Arthur CT as well. Um, it's rare to have a cyst at the suprascapular notch, but this is a nice image showing that it does exist. And if you've got a cyst at the suprascapular notch, it will be both muscles that are um, involved in the pathology. That means that we'll, we have some changes in supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Uh, most often, if we've got cysts, the cysts are more posteriorly, uh, just at the notch, uh, posterior superiorly, and they'll affect only the infraspinatus. They'll compress the portion of suprascapularis just going to the infraspinatus. And then, of course, the MRI changes will only address uh, infraspinatus. If you've got these cysts, I think, well, there's surgery needed. Uh, we won't treat that conservatively until only, un unless you've got a lot of time and those sports people, they want to get on as fast as they can. So I think if you've got major cysts, conservative treatment will help, but I think you can get them uh, faster back to sports if you're gonna treat the pathology. Uh, if you feel like treating the labral tear, you should. Um, if you're working at the labral side, we're very conservative these days. Uh, and I think if you're addressing uh, the labrum, uh, at least you should add a resection of the cyst as well. This is just a video I'll repeat and I will explain a bit more. But it's a video actually uh, showing just, just how to go. This, this, was the, this is the spine of the scapula, this was infraspinatus. And if you just push the infraspinatus from the scapula, then you will just very easily see uh, the infraspinatus branch of the suprascapular nerve. And if you, come, if you see a cyst like this, and you've seen the nerve that I dissected there, you can imagine that a cyst like that really can cause a problem on top of that nerve. So I think the, the cyst needs to be resected, and of course you should address the labral tear inside. Um, okay, now entrapment of the nerve itself. No cysts anymore, there the diagnosis is becoming a bit more difficult. But uh, as I want to go a bit more practical and don't want to take too much time, um, the things we're going to see is there's going to be a problem, there's going to be single changes uh, into the muscle bellies of supra and infraspinatus. After excluding all other uh, uh, possible uh, reasons for these changes, other reasons for the pain, uh, even and hopefully uh, confirmed with an EMG compared with the other shoulder, then I think definitely the entrapment around the notch exists. Conservative treatment does exist. We've been told that it's the primary treatment and you can do that. People have to can stop uh, their sports, give the nerves some time to recover, uh, try to improve scapular position, try to improve range of motion, although for those sports people, their range of motion, their rotational deficit, for them it's normal. So I don't know if it's very doable to really change it for them, because for them it's necessary and it's, again, almost normal. Uh, but at the end, if the pain continues, if the weakness continues, we're going to release the nerve and that's what we're going to focus on the next five minutes, uh, just maybe to talk you through for Saturday, where you can try to do this uh, on the cadavers. Um, just one small remark before we go into it. Uh, biggest problem is there are some anatomic variations, some bony foramens, uh, which you can open up. I'll show you some pictures later. Um, so keep you in mind, if you're following anatomy, what we're going to do in the next videos, there might be some anatomic changes. Uh, in some patients. So uh, for us in Belgium, uh, 
the beach chair is a bit different than the beach chairs we saw in the previous lectures. So this is our beach chair. We're, we're a lot more straight up. It's probably because we're drinking our beers when we're sitting up in the beach. So we need to be a bit more straight up. But that's the position we operate on. Um, that's the classic uh, portals that we use for the nerve. We've got the classic posterior portal, anterolateral. This is an extra portal we'll make for the scope. And this is an extra portal we will make uh, for an instrument to release and to cut actually the transverse ligament around the notch. Most important, before we go in, we have to get a perfect visualization. That means we need to do a complete bursectomy. We need to have a visualization of the AC joint. And we have to see the muscle belly of supraspinatus. Once we're there, it's quite easy actually to go and look for the nerve because we're just following the anatomic structures. Uh, just one small video. I'm, I'm going to skip other videos because otherwise we're going to take too much time and it's already so late. But this is just for your orientation. We're looking from the back in the right shoulder. This is the acromion. This is rotator cuff. There's a small rupture there. So I'm coming from lateral with my instrument. This is the AC joint. This is a lateral clavicle AC joint. So we did a complete bursectomy. And here we can see actually muscle belly from supraspinitis coming up. This is scapula, acromion, spine of the scapula and muscle belly here. So this is the preparation we, ha we need to have before we go into dive and, and, and try to look for um, the suprascapular nerve. So, uh, next step is that we're gonna change our camera. We're gonna change camera to the posterior lateral position. For me, that works easier. So we've got the posterior portal to push the muscle down. We can work from anterolateral with another instrument. Uh, and first things we have to do is look for the, the CC ligaments, clavicular ligaments. Why? The transverse ligament running over the notch is actually a prolongation of the CC ligament. So once we follow the CC ligaments that runs from top to bottom and we keep our camera straight, once the fibers change from orientation, we know that we've got the transverse ligament. So that's quite easy. You cannot make a mistake. So first things to go look for is actually those fibers running from the lateral clavicle vertically down, we push all the soft tissue away, and from the moment that it changes the orientation, we've got the transfer ligament. On top of those ligaments, I'm going to skip a few slides, so I'm going to talk through the next slides without showing it. On top of the ligament, we've got the artery. That is a landmark as well. If you've got an artery like pulsating, we know that we're going to come very, very close. If we push those aside, we'll see the nerve running underneath the Ligament. So I'm going to skip some videos because otherwise it's going to take us too long. I'll show you this one. So we're coming from laterally again. This is a right shoulder looking from posterolateral. This is anterolateral. We did an acromioplasty because there was a small rupture here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go more medially. We did a complete bursectomy. We've got the AC joint. And we're going to push. We've got muscle belly of supraspinatus. And if we push actually all the soft tissues down underneath the clavicle, which is, which is just right there, that was the clavicle, this is supraspinatus anterior border. If we push these soft tissues away, you'll see behind these tissues that there will be a ligament running from top to bottom. That is the ligament appearing here. You see, there is a ligament. And if we push all soft tissues down, at one stage it will change from orientation and here it changes and this is the transverse ligament. So this runs vertically if you keep the camera straight and from the moment it changes orientation, this is the transverse ligament. On top we see the artery, underneath we will see the nerve. So just, just anatomy, following the anatomy. A running through. Uh, okay, there is a problem. Sorry for this. Okay, so that's where we were. We, we pushed actually the tissues away. We saw transverse ligament. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make an extra portal. And the extra portal is going to be this portal. This, this mark is wrong. So this is the extra portal. If you put a needle at that location, this is where the needle is going to get up. This is the transverse ligament. These are the arteries. So this is definitely location. So if you draw your shoulder on the outside, you cannot make a mistake. This is the position if you put the needle in where you're going to come out. I uh, hope we're going to go over that. Just 
a video if you want to you can see the nerve at both sides of the ligament so if you push your camera a bit further over the ligament this is actually the nerve at the anterior side of the ligament so I'll be backing up with my camera in a second and then you see that the nerve runs actually underneath the ligament the artery runs on top of it so that was the nerve anteriorly we're gonna come back this is the artery running on top and this was a transverse ligament so next step just to go down with it we use this quite easy instrument and we just cut actually the uh, the ligament this is a we call it the nibblers in a knee for a meniscectomy it's very flat at the bottom so you can push actually the nerve down and you can uh, bite actually the ligament without uh, being afraid of harming uh, the nerve itself these are a few examples the nerve again here underneath a very thick ligament these are the arteries and with that instrument we slightly uh, bite our way through the ligament releasing actually the nerve there we go so that is just actually following the anatomy as I told you we've got some bony problems as well if so you can protect the nerve with the burr you can open it up and the nerve comes out as well a bit more difficult in diagnosis if it's just infraspinatus there's still some debate if the nerve really can be squeezed underneath the ligament at the spinoglenoidal notch I'm not sure about that we can discuss later today um, so there the pathology might be a bit more difficult is it like really a compression is it an entrapment is it a traction we're not sure yet but anyway if there's any doubt and you want to release it in practice and that's something you can do again um, in uh, in the lab on Saturday so after your constructive treatment fails you want to go in there so uh, there's the video that I showed you. This was the spine of the scapula. This is supraspinatus. In the back here is infraspinatus. And if you just push from the posterior portal, you push slowly away the infraspinatus muscle belly. Very quickly, you will see actually the nerve, the inferior the branch of suprascapular nerve appearing here with all the vessels around it. So that's how quickly you can see it and if you just follow it more to the anterior side this is what you can see um, so here we've got actually this is the spine of the scapula this is the nerve running to the back this is infraspinatus muscle so that's this here and we've got this ligament here which is in this case a real ligament so the question is can it be squeezed underneath this I'm not sure still debating but if you're there it's quite easy to cut it and to liberate actually the inferior branch of this nerve so uh, in conclusion we uh, we have to know that it does exist and if you're thinking about it in your clinic seeing patients and think about it you'll see some patients with the pathology look for the different locations that the nerve can be entrapped after failing of the conservative treatment surgery is definitely a good solution patients get rid of their pain immediately that's the biggest change immediately after the surgery pain is gone the muscle needs a lot of time to recover but the pain is gone uh, and surgery is not difficult if you follow the anatomy as we just did thank you very much